today we are talking about cropping and adjusting the image alignment and perspective, but we're not going to use the crop tool. Instead, we're going to use the transform tool. One of the things that I like to do is in my view options, I like to turn on the grid. For adjusting our horizon line, you can see that our horizon line is crooked. The, the space between these two lines in our grid is different than over here. If your grid doesn't look like mine, or if you're not seeing what you want, you can hold down the command button on a Mac, control on a Windows, and you can adjust the size with this little pop-up of the grid controls. So we can adjust our grid size until that line is just barely over the horizon. And now, if we go into our transform panel, and we click into rotate, I'm just gonna hit my arrow keys and just adjust in increments of one until that horizon line is even with our grid line. That looks really close. I'm just scanning the image from left to right and just checking this line just to see if the space is consistent. That looks good. Next thing, I'm looking at this pillar and if you look at our guideline, it is really close to the pillar down here and there's some distance between the two in here. However, we've already got our rotation set so in order to adjust this, what we want to do is we want to adjust our vertical transform. Okay, I'm just going to adjust it out by hitting the up arrow key a couple times until that line looks like it's getting a little bit closer. All right, and now you can see that this is, this is our center line right here. This is, if we were to adjust our grid size and make it incredibly big, you would see that this line right here is our center line. So the image is just slightly off center and this was clearly shot to be a centered composition. So we can adjust that as well by moving our X offset in the transform box. I'm just gonna hit the down arrow key and move it until that center line is perfectly centered within that pillar. That looks good to me. And last little bit, you can see we've got this section where there's the image is not sticking within the crop bounds. Again, instead of using the crop tool, I'm just gonna use my Y offset. I'm gonna hit the up arrow key and move it up until that white sliver is gone. Now, this presents an interesting problem. I've gone up a little bit too far, and so now we have a white sliver at the bottom. So I'm gonna reset this to zero, and what I'm going to do instead is I'm gonna hit my scale button and hit up one, up two, and that got rid of our sliver. So essentially, this just scaled up our image and maintained the exact dimensions of the image that it was shot with. So instead of making the overall image as a whole smaller through the use of the crop tool, we just scaled up the image within the original bounds. Now, if you do this too much, you will start to see some resolution problems, some pixelation. So we don't want to go too far with this. I have found that I am usually able to scale my images up anywhere from 110 to 116%. I, I try to stay below 110 on the scale, but it's very useful and it has a lot more minute controls than the crop tool, which is why I prefer to do it in my transform box instead of the crop tool. So as far as alignment and adjustments, I will choose to use the transform tool over the crop every time. I'm going to hold the command button. I'm gonna reduce my grid size again and just double check everything against some grid lines. So I'm setting my grid line just below the horizon line so I have some space that I can use to compare it against. It looks like I'm just ever so slightly off center so I'm going to hit my X offset again. And now we are perfectly centered. So at this point, we can turn off our grid and that is our final image. We've got the horizon line nice and squared away. Our pillar is nice and perpendicular to the image. We have scaled up, which is essentially cropping, to remove all of the sections of the image that dropped below our bounding box. And now we're we're done. This is this is it. This is ready to print. And you can only do so much as far as leveling your camera out in the field. And this is how I prefer to make those small adjustments to correct any perspective shifts that need to happen in post-production. Hope this helps. 
whether you use the transform tool or not, or whether you have in the past, this is how I prefer to use it because of the ability to use the minute controls for fine-tuned adjustments. As always, if there's any other topics you want me to cover, anything else you'd want to see me do a video on, please feel free to comment below or shoot me an email. Thanks for watching.